Hi and good evening. Good day and welcome to you all. This will be our second uh, webinar and I wish you very welcome. I hope that you are sitting comfortably in your best chair or couch. I am certainly doing so. In in Fujifilm we have a lot of ambassadors and uh, we have very many skilled ambassadors and in the Nordics we have uh, some very uh, good uh, ambassadors and photographers too and tonight uh, it's like Saturday evening I have mixed uh, a good cup of coffee and a good gin and tonic because this is like Saturday night on a Wednesday and it's because we have to say welcome to a special guest and that's uh, Tommy Simonsen from Norway so a very welcome to you Tommy and uh, Let's see if you're there. Hi, Hi. 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 How are you? Oh, excellent. Waiting for this. I'm yeah. pleased to be here with you. Yeah. We've been uh, waiting for this uh, event for a, a long time now. And now it's actually a premiere in Denmark that you actually have a talk in Denmark. So this is uh, fantastic. Yes. I can see that we are almost 120 and we are 278 uh, who's actually signed up for this uh, webinar. So we will just uh, have a little talk and chat uh, and let people enter the room. Um, besides you and me, uh, we have a third uh, guy so who actually takes care of all the uh, controls and he's the master in the control tower and that's of course uh Fleming Bo Jensen uh, also Fuji ambassador welcome to you tonight how are you thank you thank you I'm awesome I'm in the control tower and yeah. uh, really excited to be here it is so awesome to have Tommy on here I uh, cannot wait to hear all the crazy stories and see the uh, amazing images from this uh Unbelievably beautiful part of the Nordics, which is oh, you, don't, you don't know what you're gonna show. Gonna gonna show you, so you never know. I never know. <laughs> I, I may have looked a little at your presentation. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe I have. But to all of you out yeah. there, I will also be your voice today. I will be uh, in the chat, uh, as I can see. You've all found the chat, and you can ask questions along the way. I will make sure to keep a record of all your questions, and then. You know, at certain times, I will pop into the uh, the room and I will ask questions uh, of Tommy along the way. So fire away with all your questions. And yeah, I look forward to this incredible evening. Yeah, I'm too. And uh, uh, there's probably Fuji fans in here. There's probably also uh, fans from other brands. So... There will be a mix uh, of uh, some new stuff because uh, last week we introduced five new products and today it's actually one product that uh, we are looking at and that's the new lens, the 7300 that you actually have tried. You got an assignment. Uh, maybe you will tell us later on that it, it could have been a, a Mission Impossible, but uh, when Mission Impossible is uh, handed to you, no. ambassadors, you do magic. You figure it out and you will tell more about uh, that later on. So yes. we will uh, aim at the pictures in, spe in, in specifics and, and then discuss a bit about the 7300, how it performs. So this is, uh, besides you, Tommy, that's the other guest star. That's the 7300 uh, XF lens from the X series. So, so you're actually two star guests tonight. Um, and then the third star guest is your pictures. And that's uh, what we're looking for. And we have uh, hinted a bit that it will be a special uh, something for you tonight and only for the ones who is actually attending this webinar. So especially for you and for no one else. So that's also on top of this. Um, I think that uh, I will hand the scene to you, Tommy, and let you actually start and tell about yourself and and your story uh, for tonight. So I will hand the stage to you. So feel free to speak, Tommy. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been... Uh... I got the privilege uh, of uh, doing a special job for Fujifilm. Uh, in November, they called me and wanted me to do a job for them. They had a new lens that they wanted to test out. 
of course, uh, I'm up in the Arctic of northern Norway, and what we were heading into was uh, November is uh, turning into the dark season. And I got to telephoto lens. Um, and yeah, it was interesting. Could I, could I actually manage to pull off this? Uh, and I said to myself, well, of course I should uh, take this uh, assignment. So I presented um, a presentation here on um, on uh, this uh, uh, job that I did. Of course, star season, the new lens. I was used to work with the telephoto lens where like typical the uh, 100-400 or the uh, uh, 50 40. And to me, everything is about weight since I'm out in the field. I have to be careful what weight I put in my bag because I, I know that I have to carry it up and I have to carry it back again. There's no one, there's no way I can get it, uh, someone to, to pull, to pull that uh, load for me. So weight is a lot. It means a lot to me. And then I got it in the mail. I was heard that it was supposed to be a lightweight. Uh, Lens, and of course, when I were used to having this, and then I got that. Yeah. There's a significant uh, size difference between yeah. those two, yeah. and especially when you're working the whole day, you know, to have something lighter. When you you feel it in your shoulders when you've been working one day or two days or three days uh, when you're working, especially like I work with animals, it's a lot of telephoto, and, and often I can't use the tripod. So um, I think we should just head on with uh, the presentation, shouldn't we? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Let's do that. Uh, do we have, I can't see the, uh, the presentation here, uh, Fleming. I think we will do, uh, in the meantime, when we put up the presentation, I would actually uh, started for you. It's it's uh, you're you're from the Nordic and uh, far up north. Uh, travel light and in harsh conditions. Uh, I just want to tell that that uh, this is probably what you're going to see. Not something that we will all experience. But if you want to experience it, uh, Tommy can actually take you there too. But he will maybe explain that in before we end this session. Um, so look carefully. This could maybe be you uh, traveling along with this guy. In the yeah. future. So now the presentation is on. So you just go on. Yeah. Okay. As I said, Tommy Simonson, I'm uh, just turned 50 and uh, I've been a Fujifilm X photographer since uh, 2016. And it's been so much fun to come together with all those other guys. And we have a big variety of uh, ambassadors. So we're specializing on different topics. But when we come together, we are all just a big family. And I'm really proud to be a part of that family. Earlier, I used uh, Canon. Um, and as I said, weight is everything. When I got uh, to go down to, to, the, to the small Fujifilm cameras, it was a new revelation of, of how to use the cameras and everything. And also, I turned actually more uh, creative uh, with the all the, the items that were put in the camera, so it was so easy to work with. Um, I'm going to show you my lineup for a quick. Um, I started with X-Pro2, and I had X, uh, X-T2, but now it's uh, off the line. Uh, so I use X-H1 for video and X-T3 for stills. Um, and you see, it's not much. I got a couple of prime lenses. Um, yeah. And also, I got the GFX 50. Uh, I won't talk about the GFX system tonight. No, you, you use it for special lighting and so on. So maybe we invite yeah. you back with the GFX. So you have something there you can show us too later. So maybe another program. Yeah. The GFX system has, uh, there's something with it that is not um, at all um, to, to put uh, focus on, but uh, there's there's some really cool stuff that I have witnessed out, out, up here in the dark with uh, the GFX system and the, and the, the large uh, sensor that we got on that one. 
Okay, uh, this was the first image that I were known for in the Fujifilm family. And I had just gotten the uh, X-Pro2, it was just released, and the uh, XF100-400 were just like a week uh, old, and I don't think there was any other lenses in Scandinavia than this one. And I I thought, uh, let's give it a try. This one will, this will probably give me, either it will give me a Medal of Honor, and I, or I think it would be court martial because of this. Um, well, I'm still around, so. <laughs> yes, so, uh, so it went well, but she actually tried to to steal the camera. But uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So they called me in uh, in uh, November and asked me to do the new thing they had, the seventy three hundred. Um, and I said yes. This would probably be the right thing for me also uh, to put in my bag anyway. Uh, of course, we had the aperture 4 to 5.6, but uh, we have all those uh, stabilizers and, and things that are insane now. So if the, the motive doesn't move, then it will help me a lot. Um, uh, Jonas Rask, uh, uh, or other, uh, one of our other ambassadors, he have taken the uh, official images of, um, of the... Uh, all the products and uh, it's quite small yes he took one picture of it that where yeah he actually soaked the whole lens because uh, it's weather sealed and yeah. <laughs> i need that i was wondering can, can you actually take pictures if that's it's so soaking wet like that or is it just a product picture no no Tell i me. do so like that <laughs> well yeah. Uh, I'm actually known for uh, uh, being mean to my equipment because as just with myself, I'm also really rough on everything around. So to get the right pictures, uh, um, I, I, I copied, uh, a few, some years ago, I copied uh, uh, Jonas's style on my camera after a mountain trip in Sanya out here. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, then I think uh, our staff in, in uh, Stockholm and, and, yeah. and uh, you guys realize that, oh, this is going to be expensive to have me on the, on the line here. Um, yeah. And that's sometimes when we lend you gear and you say, I oh, will go up north uh, and we have seen your cameras and they are beaten up, uh, and, but they still perform uh, a this. lot of the time, but not this time. <laughs> but then again, I can't express how much importance there is to use a UV filter on the lenses in the field. Because I have saved so many lenses just because the, 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 the filter takes the beating and then I just uh, clean carefully the glass, put it in a bag, bring it in, a, in the camera bag and, and just turn off the, uh, the and twist the, the filter and continue to use the camera. But it's got a lot of scratches and this is, uh, this is a, a three month old camera now. This one could make it. Um, this is uh, too too bad. This is actually the Tommy Simley special serial number that I got from Fujifilm because I was on the XT2 project. Uh, so I destroyed it and couldn't be used. I asked to get it back again, but um, I think it's on the wall of shame in, in, in the main <laughs> of <laughs> Probably, probably. Don't do this at home. Well, but anyway, I tried to take care. This is uh, this is serious. This is really really bad. I tried to take care of the equipment. It's important because uh, I want to do I want to do good images. If I break my camera in the field, of course I have another one. But uh, but I can't bring spare ones and spare ones. It's, it's important to take care of of the equipment. And um, okay, we have um, the official lens. They told that it was really small and everything. Uh, so just to compare it to, I made my own slide to, to, so this is how big it is. So um, just some tech specs. Um, as we know, it's, um, it's a linear motor. Uh, so it's really fast autofocus. It's super quick. Uh, they say that it is, it is. Uh, it's stabilizer. It uh, do 5.5 stops. Is it right, Dean? 
Yes, uh, it has five uh, in the lens itself. It's a, and if you uh, put, yeah, and if you put it on in the XT4, you can go up to six point five actually. Yeah. So, but it, it's quite efficient. Uh, five point five in a, a lens like that. So, so as long you as could you do with that. Yeah. yeah. So as long as you move, um, your your um, um, uh, motive doesn't move, then uh, it's really stable. And also, of course, the, what you if you're standing on a boat, but also that helps me a lot to have a stabilizer on the moving boat. Yeah. Yeah. 580 grams, uh, and this small little thing, you actually carry up to 457 millimeter if you equals if you used to the full frame. So it's really small, and you got a lot of kit in your bag. And if you think that 457 is not enough, then you could add with a, a teleconverter, the small ones. I, I use I use the small one, the, the 1.4, uh, most because of I'm, I, I work with little light. I can't uh, lose too much light. Uh, so, uh, and then you have, um, uh, if you use the 1.4, you've got 640 millimeter or the two times the converter in this uh, 914. Uh, small and, filter, and not you, yeah. You lose a stop when you put on a 1.4, you lose two stops when you put on a two uh, times uh, yeah. uh, converter. So beware of that. Uh, so if you're in really low light, that could influence uh, if you can actually shoot. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And to all your, you just check the, the, the close range is 83 centimeters. And I, I think, is it all over the range? It's a, it's a, we, we checked it uh, last week and yes, it is. So it's actually a really good macro lens too, uh, because of this. And it's actually all over. Um, I think that uh, Jonas tested it live last week. And yes, so it's also a very capable micro uh, macro lens yeah. in that uh, area so you have actually a combined two in one mm. uh, lens that's uh, that's fantastic yeah so uh, i will show you uh, examples of that I'm, I'm not a typical macro guy but uh, i will show you examples of uh, images uh, anyway as i said i decided to use the xt3 and you see you can put on either use it with or without the vertical grip as often as possible, I try to work, use it without, just because of weight. But if it's really cold, like here on this project, I were in a boat. Uh, we're supposed to do uh, wolves and whales. That was my assignment for I decided to give myself uh, on uh, this um, job. And um, when you could stay in a boat and you work with uh, mittens and, you know, it's all about battery capacity. We know all those, all you guys who are... Uh, working out in the cold with uh, with full digital cameras. It's not only full film, it's all digital cameras. It's all about uh, power. And if you're like me, then you sometimes have minus uh, 10, minus 20, minus, it's like, and if you're out for a week, yeah. then it's, it's a challenge without being able yeah. to recharge. So then you just have to have a grab bag with uh, batteries. Yeah. But I decided uh -huh. to use the vertical grip on this one. You know, on this do, do you try to keep the, the batteries warm somehow? Or because there was a question: How is the battery time when you're in 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 cold conditions? It's that's that's uh, the problem. The batteries drain themselves in 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 the chill. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, and um, especially with all those, uh, if you use the the um, the uh, image uh, stabilizer, the optical stabilizer, then it's. Uh, Drain, uh, draining the batteries uh, quite quick, but yeah. um, I use it anyway. I try to use I use it anyway uh, on the tele lenses. Um, anyway, um, I have this rule. I have this grab bag. Maybe I grab like twenty batteries. I have uh, charged and going out on uh, larger assignments if I'm going to be out for a longer time. Or and then uh, I have this rule that the batteries, all the batteries I'm going to use for the day. Uh, I keep them warm, uh, and the batteries I'm not going to use, I, I just let them freeze. And uh, in the morning, I take the batteries I'm going to use, and I put it in my right pocket. I have this from the right, and then it's into the camera, and then it's used to go to the left pocket, but it's still juice left in the, in the battery. So after I've drained the new battery in the camera, 
then uh, that, that battery that's in the camera go in the left pocket and the left pocket uh, battery go into the camera again. So I do that uh, for a couple of times and then it's really, the battery is done. So it's not done just because the camera uh, says so. No, so so yeah. So when when it warms up, it gets uh, actually back in a in a shape that where it can actually deliver uh, more power. So there's there's different ways to do it. You put it in your pockets. Uh, I've spoken to some wildlife guys. Uh, if you have a jacket on, where you can put it uh, inside uh, under your arm or close to your body, so you use your body heat. That's also yeah. a way to do it. Some use these uh, where you crack uh, a gel and have yeah. a bag where it is and you can keep it warm down there uh, just check out that uh, it doesn't overheat this one so be careful with that or do a test before so you can keep yeah. the, the heat up on the, the, the battery so it's a lot of uh, ways of doing but you, when the, when the camera says it's it's empty it's not it's the real just so uh, so the batteries I'm not going to use for the day if I'm on an expedition I let them freeze it they are cold they are just uh, Frozen. I just want to show one thing on the on the picture you have because I would take a whiteboard and just do something. If you if you look here, there's a lock on the new. It that's a totally new thing because the the lens it actually goes out uh, when you twist it, but now you can actually lock it in the position where you're in the seventy millimeters. So you lock it, but when you then want to zoom out, you just give it a, a really good. Uh, fast, firm uh, toggle, and then it's out again. Yeah, so it it unlocks, yeah, the and then you, yeah. So it doesn't lock when you go in the seventy millimeter position. Only when, yeah, only when you uh, click the lock. So you don't have this, uh, you know, full length of the the lens hanging out your side and maybe bump into stuff and 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 smash it. So that's a new uh, new uh, thing, uh, and you can lock the. A position too, so when it's in automatic, you can lock that so it doesn't click out of the automatic position on the lens too. So some new stuff from Fuji. Yeah, there are some cool stuff like that that you don't need to to unlock it. Just you just start, you just start to work immediately. That's, uh, that's yeah. I never put my camera. I always have it hanging on the side when I'm working. Uh, yeah. So uh, and then I have the telephone, the tele lens. I just extract and just uh, smash into something. So it's a good thing that they have uh, made the, the quick click, so, so the quick lock, so you just uh, start to work. You bring it up and start to work. You don't need to, to un unlock it. And also, yeah. there's no IS button. I, I start, I, when I got it, I said, oh, Ludwig, I can't find it. You said it should be a, <laughs> it should be a stabilizer on it, but it's not. Well, it's, it's yeah. busy. So the, the lens actually understands uh, whether it's on a tripod or not. Yeah, so you gyro, a gyroscope in the side it so that's actually yeah. tested we just want to keep it take out a warning if anyone is is from the usa and looking into this someone uh, said you can put the batteries in your mouth don't do that <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. isn't it healthy and if you swallow it i don't if you are 30 300 kilometers from a hospital um, that could be dangerous so so don't heat your batteries up uh, by putting them in the mouth and some said 20 bit of batteries in your mouth at the same time that's not good either so okay um back to the project as we said i were going to take pictures of of moving uh, uh animals uh, and of course it's, i was on the brink of the, of the dark season it was coming on to the dark season and people if you haven't experienced it, you don't know what it is. It's actually just that the sun is not above the horizon. And the further away from the date where the sun disappears, the darker the days will become. Like, if you're further north, it's polar night. It's just total darkness. You can see difference on night or day, but we don't have that dark, but it's still dark. It's lack of technical light. Uh, normally, when I go whale projects, I, I use, often I use the, uh, the 2.8. Uh, 50 under 40. And now I was supposed to, like, two weeks too late after I normally do my project, I was going to use this uh, 4 to 5.6 lens um, for this. And I, I said, oh, this is going to be interesting. But yeah, I would give it a try. Just to explain what the, uh, what the dark season is, the, the, the globe is not standing in upright position when it uh, turns around the sun. So it's uh, actually tilted. 
So at 66.5 degrees, you got uh, the Arctic Circle. You have the same at the Antarctic Circle. So in winter time, um, from a certain point, depending on how far north you are, you, it, it, the sun disappears earlier. So, um, so that there was a there was a challenge, wasn't it, that yes, you? Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah. The same thing. This is also why we have the midnight sun in summertime in northern Norway, because uh, mm -hmm. this uh, globe the Earth will be on the other side of the sun, but then it will uh, we will point towards the sun, so we have no no night in summertime. So, um, this is well how dark it was and it's all depending on if it, you got clear sky or not also that's really important so you have to be have luck with weather i did uh, this project together with my compadre paul locally a uh, cool crazy guy who works in from oslo uh, and he's extremely extremely talented so we went out uh, on a cowboy journey together uh, searching for uh, wolves and whales and I think we should actually now, uh, Paul, he was with us, uh, with me, and, and he were doing uh, uh, film footage of uh, this project. And we have been, um, uh, we have been allowed to, by Fujifilm, by main head office in Japan, to, to show this uh, movie tonight once, because it's not set up for premiere yet, but we will be able to, show you this film and i think it's really awesome so uh, yes we got allowed to do that so you have a special premiere today no one else and we're 142 people and the three of us sitting here so this is a premiere no one will see it uh, before tokyo releases uh, so i think that fleming should uh, invite us into uh, the cinema yeah, yeah. Let's go to a world premiere of uh, Tommy's new movie. So if we all switch off, I will start the presentation. Here we go. I am Tommy Simonsen, a Fujifilm X photographer from Norway. Fujifilm wanted me to do a field test of the XF7300 lens. I decided to really try it out in Arctic Norway during the dark season. I wanted to make a stop at my friends in Polar Park to do a pre-test on the 7300 before giving the bigger challenge. This would sure be a close-up and personal experience. This is the challenge, to freeze the movement of both the whales and my small boat that wobbles in the waves. I have to shoot at a shutter time at 1000 parts second in the low light. The XF7300 and the X-T3 camera that I decided to use would really have to perform in a semi-light that actually would be dusk that turns directly to dawn. The easiest way to reach the whales is to use the fishing village of Shadway at 70 degrees north as a base. This was going to be a dark and moody project based on high ISO in mainly black and white. Every year the whales, mainly orcas and humpbacks, follows the herring into a few northern Norwegian fjords to feed upon them. Between the tall impressive mountains 
this Arctic fairy tale reveals itself and people come from all over the world to witness this. What is my impression of the XF7300? I have pushed it to the limits that would give any telelens a challenge. This is, however, a versatile, small and lightweight lens that delivers high quality images. It is the perfect companion for anyone seeking a reliable telelens when you need to get real close as well as the bigger picture. Because this lens impressed me on both wolves and whales in the darkness. Whoa, my, yeah, it was really, really good. And and I, I actually stated early on today that uh, Kevin Costner uh, is calling Dancing with the Wolves in Danish. It's uh, go home because uh, <laughs> these wolves and, and that low light, that was a, a massive challenge uh, to the F4 lens and you, and you actually did it. And, and it's really nice to see that the test with the with the with the high ISO and how the pictures turns out so fantastic you all got a premiere and uh, it was house conditions for you and Paul Paul as a video uh, guy and s some of the uh, the audience here ask how does it work with the uh, OIS in, in a boat is it is it possible is it stable and, and does it really work with you yes it's like um I've done with the working with the boat so many years, so I feel the the waves, and you know the maximum, and you just. But sometimes with with those whales, they are just jumping, bang, 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 and it's just split second, and they are up and. Tuk, tuk, tuk. But yeah. it stills. I can I can feel it in my knees, and and so I'm standing there trying to, to stabilize it with my knees, but also the, the camera is vital, uh, and the stabilizer in the in the lens and the camera. It's yeah. so important, and um, yeah. I've seen also with filming and uh, impossible pictures. Uh, of course, it's not you have to. It's not perfect, but uh, it helps me a lot. Yeah. So um, yeah. I'm not going on any oh. tele lens unless I have a stabilizer at all. No. Mm. This is this is of course a stress test, and the the best condition is of course when you have have a really good light and then you you have better conditions you can go down in iso and so on mm -hmm. so but it's 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 really good to see that it's tested uh, at its limits and that's uh, crucial then we get an idea uh, in which direction we're going and and see which conditions uh, you can actually pull this lens and cameras in, into that's uh, that's uh, yeah, really impressive but actually with it with the Fuji film cameras, it's so easy to work. You have the screen, and it's showing you exactly what you get. So it's so easy to jog also with mittens, heavy mittens, or, or not mittens, but gloves. Uh, I always yeah. use gloves. I never use mittens, actually. Uh, but you have access to everything, the ISO, the the, the uh, shutter time, and you have the aperture. So it's easy to adjust, and you just see. And, and, and I often, I just keep jogging. And... If I turn that yeah. way, it's another uh, one uh, exposure setting, and there's another one, and there's another one. It's changing so much depending on the, the direction of the light. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. easy to work and and have control of the exposure uh, with. Uh, and often I use the screen. Uh, yeah. If I use the, the 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 viewer, it's just because I I keep it so I, I can keep it tight. Yeah, you know, you keep it steady, tight and steady, so yeah. you yeah. I keep, I just, Stabilize it with my head. Yeah, we know this one that the boat rocks and then the camera goes yeah. like this. And if you keep it to your head, yeah, and and it's a good recommend uh, recommendation if you work where you actually have these on boats and so on, where we have these uh, 
uh, very tough condition where uh, it's a huge movement. Uh, then the and you are in cold environment with gloves on. The XT3 and T4 is definitely your camera because you have this great uh, scroll wheels and wheels. Uh, you can actually grab them and still be uh, uh, moving them, uh, even though it's a small camera. So. Yeah. So and and maneuvering the lens too uh, was also uh, yeah, easy to. It's so smooth, yeah. it's so smooth. Yeah. and it's so yeah. quick from out here and there. It's it's really smooth on on the movement. Yeah. I've had some would you say that it's holding would, back? This one is not holding back. It's just a little bit. So it's uh, yeah, as much as it should be. Would you say that it's uh, actually because we we designed the, the lens actually to be able to shoot birds uh, in in good light conditions? Do do you reckon that if you have good light conditions that it would uh, be oh, fast enough? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm not yeah. a birder, but uh, I saw um, uh, we had a Spanish photographer and he did this uh, yes images and they were so lovely. Oh, I was like, oh, I want to have good light. I saw these crisp. Yeah. <laughs> sharp bird images it did and uh, it was yeah. just uh, you, lovely yeah there were some questions around this birds and uh, at the footy film uh, slash x dot com uh, uh, you can actually see this movie with the uh, with the bird so 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 definitely yes uh, it's 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 really good for that and yeah. to zoom in so I would actually let you carry on with all the nice pictures instead of uh, talking too yes. much because uh, yeah. pictures that's, picture, too that's uh, what we be here for and live for so i will yeah out. we could head back into um to see the mhs and um okay this old bloke we don't need him let's head on to the rules uh for many years i've been working with uh, my friends at a place called polar park in uh, northern norway in in a Troms county it's it's a zoo but it's a special zoo because this is uh it's called the um the National Predator Center, they have large areas fenced where the animals can roam at. So if I go in there, it's not necessary that they uh, they could just say, I don't want to be with you. I can I leave you. So uh, I could go in with the rules here and it's a it's a pack of um of five wolves in there. It's uh, Brage, the uh, alpha dog, and you got uh, Peder, another male. And uh, Freya and Frigg and Marit, uh, they are socialized, but not tame. Not a second you should believe that they are tame, because you have to follow uh, specific rules. And they work within as a pack, and they have the alpha dog and the omega individ and everything in there. But you have to, as long as you follow the rules, uh, then uh, everything would be fine. Uh, my friends there, uh, Stig. And Anita, they have been working with uh, this, uh, following up those this pack for many years since they were born. Uh, they were born in 2014, and um, I've also been following them the whole time. I started working with this uh, facility in, in 98, I think. Um, and it's really interesting, uh, but you should not for a second believe that those guys are huskies, because uh, they are not. But follow the rules, and they will come and greet you, and then they probably would leave you if you, they don't find you interesting. Uh, but um, to be able to be so close to these animals are, are really something special. Uh, we, um, of course, this is in November. It's a special winter here in Northern Norway. We have had no snow almost. Uh, so it's been just ice and cold. And uh, normally we should have lots of snow. Now the sun, snow is down in the south. Uh, even Madrid has snow, but we don't. Uh, luckily, there's been snow uh, yesterday and today, just a little bit, so we get a little bit more white, not so dark. And um, what I were actually impressed, we're in the forest, and, and I thought uh, I would have challenge now. We came up there, we had little light, and. Just, I, I knew that my window of opportunity here, we, I had about 45 minutes to do this shoot because it was so little light coming in. And in the forest here, uh, I thought, oh, the, uh, it's even darker and the, uh, the autofocus will have challenge and trouble with, with uh, finding. But actually, it was no problem. Uh, 
Of course, I use the XT3. It's uh, the uh, updated firmware, the same focus system now as XT4. Uh, and combined with a brand new focus system of the of the uh, XF7300, I thought maybe it had a chance. And that's why I dared to go uh, and let this, this project uh, go on, go on the road. Um, but being in the pack also, it's so interesting to see all those uh, the signals they're sending. You know, dogs are sending signals, but wolves, they are even, even more when they send signals. And they have the sharpest teeth. Uh, I have had like one of my the camera bags just came one, one time and it just, I didn't know it, uh, it touched it, but he actually took the, the thick, heavy web uh, strap and just, and just cut it with just a little bit. I didn't realize he had been close to it. Uh, so they have really sharp teeth and they don't want to use those teeth. So it's much more signals and they try to, to be able to avoid uh, a, a real fight because that will be devastating, not only to their, their pack members, but also probably to themselves. Um, I had earlier today, uh, uh, Gary asked me on, uh, asked us on Instagram and the future Nordic Instagram, he would like to see this one in, in color. So I edited and, and changed the problem. So this is in color. Um, wow. The pictures could be colored as well, but I thought, uh, let's make it uh, dark and moody and uh, turn them into yeah. black and white. Yeah. Both but, are really uh, beautiful. Here's the, the color uh, version of, of uh, that uh, yawning wolf. All right. You get you get really close to the wolves, uh, and you 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 actually have to know the signals. So you have learned the signals from the wolves pack uh, to know actually to be uh, allowed to be there actually that close, haven't you? Yeah, they do let people uh, that close on certain conditions, on like in, in certain. But um, so you can come in here as a private person also, and then uh, they they will take you in. And uh, but you have to follow uh, specific rules uh, yeah. when you're in there. And uh, Anita and Steve, they will immediately see if there's something going on. You know, when they're yeah. uh, so they're sensitive. Yeah. yeah, but they they send out all those signals. I've been working in a, a dog yard as a dog musher for a year also on, on Svalbard and Spitsbergen. And the first three months, the f first uh, two two months, I did I take most of the pictures. I just take pictures, and after three months. I started to see what was going on in the, in the, in the pack, in the flock. And then there was less and less images uh, using a camera because I saw things happening in the, in the, in the, within the dogs just by the signals. So, but those guys are even stronger on signals. How far up north in, in Norway are you here and away from your home? How well, far is it? Say Lofoten Islands. Everybody know Lofoten Islands. So, yeah. My place is Hörsta, it's a um, two, three hour drive away from Lofoten. And then you head straight west in, inland. So it's yeah. just like Lofoten and you're going west to the inland. Yeah, so that's a survival trip for yeah, our a, southern uh, yeah, people. <laughs> yeah. I highly uh, recommend this and they got other animals as well. You can come close and see them. If they want to come to the fence, they come to the fence. If they don't want to show them, they just go away. They, uh, yeah. Thing. yeah, it's impressive. It's impressive. So, yeah, a lot of signals. Uh, of course, uh, high ISO. Often on this, uh, as I said, I, I would like to shoot like a thousand parts second at animals, but um, uh, this is. Um, 125 parts second at aperture five. Um, so it's uh, ISO 3200. I see that there's images uh, shot on all. So I, I'm trimming the ISO. Whenever I see I could get some ISO, I turn it down just to avoid uh, grains. Like this image is uh, at the end of the, the trip and then at the day and then. And this is at 12,800 ISO, 250 parts second. So it depends on what the animals are doing and I relying on, on the, on the stabilizer. And um, like this one is at 160 parts second. 
at 3,200. So yeah. I try all the time to, to trim down the ISO and, and see what the animals do and, and, and uh, adjust uh, aperture to, to um, compare to, to the ISO to get the ISO right. Yeah. So, so you, you, you always have this uh, uh, bit afraid of, uh, or not afraid, but uh, you want so much light and, and don't want the grain. But now you have actually tested and seen the pictures and, and shot with the grains. Uh, uh, some like it, some don't. Um, I think that's the character of Fuji that they are a bit more fine and filmatic. So it, it helps quite a lot so they don't get this... Uh, uh, rough texture and and that's maybe uh, a good savior when you don't have the light so i think it's a uh, filmic and smooth that it, it can actually bear it also when you print it it could actually uh, be okay couldn't yeah it? on the on the rag paper that would be yeah. lovely to give an extra texture in yeah. uh, of course i had a discussion uh, earlier today with uh, with fleming uh, with he like on this really, really uh, impressive uh, rock, uh, the concept uh, images he does. Uh, yeah. He likes the grain, so he wants the grain. Yeah. But um, as a nature yeah. photographer, I, I want to take away, depending on the style, but normally I try to avoid grains. Yeah. Maybe you have a comment, uh, Fleming, because grain is uh, a part of your job, actually, and your pictures, because that's mandatory in, in those conditions you are in. Um, yeah, I, I, but I think it's also different because what I'm shooting is indoors in a concert venue and there's a lot of haze in the air. So there's already a grainy feeling even when you're there and looking at it. Whereas things like this in nature, unless it's foggy or something, but it's pretty clear. It's also, it feels yeah. and looks pretty clear. So I get the point of wanting to have it slightly less grainy. But I do like the fact also about the high ISO on the Fujifilm cameras that it's not really noise. It's just more like grain. You yeah. you don't get this ugly color noise. You just get sort of more grain in the image, and and that's why you can shoot at twelve thousand eight hundred, and it, it still looks really nice. Yeah. Um, but it is with grains. It's everything. It's photography. It's just feelings. It's all about when well, some like this and some like this. So it's, there's no answer to it. Yeah. It's, it's it's a good it's a good test that you can actually see these uh, pictures with this kind of uh, grain then you know f f where from where and where to go actually so you have a an idea of what what it's grain actually like when you're in these conditions and then if you have really good light it's no problem so you know the the space in this um, system mm -hmm. and, and lenses and, and iso so fantastic yeah it's a uh... When I work with 100, 400 in here, that I often do, uh, often I find them like they come too close, that they stop at a certain point. But the, the 70, 300, it was really good in here. It was just exactly the little more from 100 to, to 70. Uh, it, it sounds like it's not much, but it is the difference. And it works quickly. It's dark and still keeps on taking focus. Um, so I was like in the... Uh, I were just in a bubble and stopping thinking that there was, I should be impressed because I was just working like I used to. But uh, afterwards I, I said, Oh, I've been working in the dark and it's still moving animals and, and they're walking and they're close and yeah, I still uh, got the focus. And at one point, uh, the pack started howling. They, they were starting howling ooh, to each other. And uh, at this point, this uh, fellow, walked up behind me, stood like uh, a meter away from me, like you had been leaning onto me uh, on my back as I stood uh, taking, I sat there taking pictures of, of uh, his, his, uh, other, the other bulls. And and it was so close and I was like, ah, oh, oh, I can't. And I had a telephoto and, and I turned around and I was like, oh, I want to do the image, I can't, but I actually could. And then I realized that the, the Impression. I, I had the 70, of course, uh, but still, and I had 83 centimeters, and it could be, I must have been so close to the maximum uh, close range here. So, uh, but it managed to to do this, and and I, I could never. This the feeling when you stand there and a uh, wolf are howling just close to you, and I stand there here and there and there and there and, there, and talking to each other. Ah, oh, that is one of. I, I never got. Uh, 
I never get uh, like uh, I not I don't stop being impressed impressed by by this uh, this activity and the feeling I get the rush I get when I hear that. It must be an amazing, like amazing feeling, yeah. Yeah, and and it's not many of us who actually get this opportunity, but uh, it's actually possible, isn't it, to to go there and be guide, guided into trips like this? You you do it, don't you? Or? Yeah, we do. We do have that. Of course, uh, I had several times I had people like just getting information from me and said, well, "Can you?" I said, "Yeah, it's open. You could order." But the difference is that, uh, of course, when I go, I know here and there. I've been working for a long time there, so if I take people in, they know exactly where. Uh, I know exactly where where I got the good uh, positions and so on, yeah, and the light, yeah. which is everything. You maybe so, keep it as a secret where the wolf pack is. So no, 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 it's not secret. I have, I yeah. really want them. The, the tourist industry is, is broken. We need to get everything everywhere. Is the tourist industry need to come up again, and they are yeah. relying on 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 incomes and so pull apart. They are on the internet. No, no, and they have you. And we, and we are different than the photographers. We we see it differently. So so yeah. it's not the same picture. So uh, I'm not afraid of leaving my places and spots uh, to uh, to anyone else because they have another angle, another view, another look. So. Mm. Um, some of, some of them are asking you: Do you do you do much uh, post uh, production or work on it? Uh, shortly, what do you actually do? Uh, a little or much? Or? I'm a lazy guy. You know. uh, I know. I do a little. I I, I do like. What's the other What's the other program? It's called the one you're trying to push us. <laughs> oh, I'm one. really untechnical. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What's it called? The other program, that's the capture one, and then you have uh, capture one, yes. And I think capture one might be a better program, but uh, I don't have time to sit down and, and learn myself. I'm sit, I'm on my own up here, so uh, just yourself. Yeah. So, so Lightroom, uh, Photoshop. Oh, I don't think so. Uh, maybe. No. So most of the things I I do uh, in Lightroom. Yeah. 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 And if Sometimes it ain't broken, don't fix it. So stick to your program, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I'm too lazy. I want to do <laughs> my job out there and not in here. So I'm yeah. I'm actually really um, accurate on on the explore. Try to be as accurate, just as I'm shooting JPEGs, so I could yeah. go in go in there and then and get um get the um uh, yeah, get as close good as possible in the beginning with everything white balance, even though I could. Adjust and, and so on, but yeah. Well, uh, the technicians gave us raw files, isn't that the word? Okay. So then we have we were finished. Paul and me, we had our forty-five minutes of fame in in with the wolves, and, uh, and so we um, continued. It's a long drive up, nor not an always. A, it's a long stretch of country, and the whales are coming in every year now. Uh, those recent years, uh, they have been coming in to the around the, the small fishing village of Shelby. And this is in October, end of October. <clears throat> this year they were late, but I think they're following. It was the full moon that uh, they came in on the full moon. Uh, and, uh, the, the herring, uh, the um, the whales that comes in from the, the, the Arctic Ocean come into the uh, small fjords of, um, of uh, northern Norway and they come in to rest and to feed. So they are following the herring, the shoals of herring. Uh, and it is also a tourist industry. Normally there's a lot of boats out there because there's people coming from all over the world to ex uh, witness this because it's really unique to get so close to those animals that people are, are so um, um, impressed by. So I like to use, um, the good thing about uh, Shaivan area around, you got the, the Alps around there. Uh, so you have the fjord and you have those steep, crazy, impressive mountains around you. So it's a scenery that is really, uh, yeah, impressive. Uh, when I work with, um, with things like this, I need to have uh, a boat drive. I need to have a, a driver. I have, I have to have a local point of contact, which I know will help me do my job. Uh, so I like to work from, from small boats like uh, open boats like this, but big enough so they are sturdy and, and safe. Uh, 
right here. It's the company of uh, 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 Explore 70 degrees north. And um, what I'm, uh, this is a little bit cool. She's the toughest uh, girl on uh, on Shadowway. It's Susanne and uh, ex. Uh, she actually comes here. She has been raised in, in Svalbard in Spitsbergen. So she have made her living uh, here. But uh, I like the way uh, Susanne works because she, there's a lot of boats that go too close to the waves. They don't respect the rules and uh, they go close. And the uh, thing is with Susanne, um, she, she, um, she respects this and we have to, we, we really uh, uh, watch this, how they move and, and so on and try to not be in their way. But I think they don't care too much about people uh, coming too close. But um, yeah. Especially the boats should be careful with coming too close. So dark season. This is actually what dark season is on a on a clear day. This is uh, you have some clouds and you you the sun is behind the mountains somewhere, and uh, it lights up the clouds and and gets you get a lot you get a lot of colors, but it's dark on the fjord. So I I. I it's it's difficult so late on the season as this is um they call it the dark season but actually it should be called the color season because you've got those crazy pastel colors that you don't have on any, any other uh, part of the year so the time just before and after the sun uh, disappears and when it reappears that's important those those uh, hours those weeks or days they are important uh, that's a that's normal window opportunity. Well, at this when I came into the fjord and was not I was not lucky. I knew I had those few days and uh, I should have been doing. Um, uh, maybe I should have put a project on sea eagles in Lofoten instead. As I thought for a second because uh, it was just dark uh, on the. Um, on the uh, on the ocean and you can you, you have to find uh, openings. And you have to go there, uh, openings in the in the clouds, and then see if you can get some reflection onto uh, the fjord and the animals. And this is typical with the humpbacks. They are um, coming up and just uh, blowing a few times, breathing before they deep uh, go deep on uh, diving again, and they blow up. And uh, I know exactly this. This is all about. Uh, uh, repetition. I've been doing this and I know that situations like this and I like coming towards me and I got the silhouette and the, the, the blow that they breathe, the, the, the moist they breathe blow out, uh, it will uh, really um, uh, paint out nicely uh, towards the dark mountains. So this is actually a plan. This is plan. This is not a location that it happened. Or is it actually occasion that they came right here? But uh, I know the situation. I recognize the situation, and I try to put the boat uh, exactly where we need it to be, where we so, uh, would uh, assume that the animals will appear. And uh, this is um, orcas, of course. Uh, orcas are uh, my uh, favorite. Because they, it's much, uh, it's much happening. They are much more lively and they more speed than. And yeah, here you can see a little bit about the, the mountains. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy, and the background is really good as a, as a background to this. And just seeing the fins and just uh, you know what's happening. And when you see these waves, they are working in in groups when yeah. they are catching the fish and so on. So they. Are quite clever. Yeah. Uh, it must be fantastic, and uh, I understand why you 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 really love these animals. Orcas are, orcas are worldwide, but those uh, orcas we got here, um, you know, worldwide. But they, they hunt on whatever they they specialize on the prey they can get. So you see the Antarctic uh, orcas uh, chasing uh, seals uh, up on the shoreline and grab them out of the shoreline and back into the ocean and. But uh, those guys we got up north here is uh, they are feeding mainly upon uh, upon uh, herring, so it's quite popular to go uh, diving with uh, or supping or whatever with uh, with those. Uh, 
uh, uh, workers. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't. The, there's still there's a there's a good question I hear. What aperture are these pictures taken on? Because it it it's really, it yeah. really from from my perspective it isn't dark, but uh, it probably is you. Uh, yeah. What aperture? I, I have prepared for this. Um, this is um, taken at a thousand parts second, uh, aperture five point six, and it's uh, twelve thousand eight hundred ISO. Yeah. So you can see it's Fantastic. a little bit. Uh, if I'd been using normally, they would have been a little bit more sharp. The the dwarf dorsal fins, but um, everything with the color and so on, I think it's um, it works. Yeah. So print this on the uh, on rag paper, and you got art. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Of course, with all those herrings coming in, you have the local uh, fishermen also. Um, uh, Catching all those uh, herrings, but they they are not uh, actually. It's a lot of uh, combined work when when the the uh, whales and orcas come close to the uh, the fishing vessels and catch the spoils of uh, to feed upon the spoils of uh, the fishermen's catch. So um, it's interesting to see, but you can't go close to those uh, vessels uh, with your boats when you are out. Um, because it's dangerous that for for so you don't get in the way for the nets and so on, and you create a dangerous situation. So you have to respect the rules. But anyway, it's, uh, it's a lot of fishing boats. I have just as many pictures of fishing fishing boats as uh, as I got of whales. I think. Yeah, that's a good question too, uh, uh, Tommy. Yeah. Do you just spray or do you take single shots? Uh, do you have five thousand pictures, or do you? Have... Yeah, I got five thousand pictures. You have to, um, but it's all about. I'm not uh, at high. I'm, I'm not shooting at high. Uh, what's it called here? It's single it's, uh, CL and it's CH continuous yeah. low. I, I shoot at continuous low because I'm afraid that I will blow my uh, my uh, uh, take too many pictures, so the buffer would uh, fill up. And when it's really happening, then yeah. So uh, I, I use. So it's a burst spray. I, you actually burst spray like. Yeah. Short. Yeah. But not as yeah. many as you should. It's because they are coming up, and you can see them coming in, and I'm placing. I, I see. Okay, there's a there's a pod coming in from the side there, and okay, Susanne, can you take a boat here? There, yeah, good, good. And here, and I plan to because I plan to take the, the image like this, so they come in, and I have the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. And you probably get a getting oh. a rhythm, and you know the pattern, yeah. and, and and then it's like uh, music. Been uh, talking to Fleming when you know yeah. the beat and music, you have the same here. You suddenly get into the Absolutely. the pace and so on. So then you don't have to to do high continuously. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Probably. So you, you feel them coming in, and I don't care when they're there. I just no 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 no. Yes, now. Yeah. And as they work with the, as a, it's a family uh, pod, uh, this, and then they work uh, as a pack. And it's really cool because you have both the, the male ones and, and also the babies. Uh, the difference, you know, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of females here because they're uh, not so, so tall. I don't know this guy, is, if they could be a male, but the males are much, much higher dorsal fins. And you also find babies along. Uh, Along there, yeah, fantastic. And also the cool thing with the with the uh, orcas, they often come up and and do a, a a spy hop. So they they come spy hopping and up and look around just whoop, for a second and go down again. And then you have to be ready for. Oh, and that's also that the autofocus have to work quick because you never know it could be. Just uh, two meters away from your boat, or it could be five, or it could be uh, 100 meters away from. So you have to look all around you. And you have to, when you come ashore after a day on the ocean like this, you are just, uh, your brain is melted because you have been working ta -ta 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 -ta, so much searching the, the, everywhere around you. So, um, yeah, I they were not so much uh, spy hopping. I had much more than this, but uh, you never know. It's wild animals. They, you just have to observe. But uh, 
we managed to, to catch it. And actually, I were going to throw this picture so a picture away. I didn't find anything. But then Paul said to me, no, no, look here. And he, he got another way of thinking and viewing. And, and I, th I think he came out nicely, this uh, composition here. Yeah. And when you say spy hopper, it's 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 checking out and it's there uh, as a solo, so uh, uh, it's really. It's good. Good. I often I've seen them. They come up close to the boat sometimes and just uh, you you see them look at you. So they're just observing you for a second and they just. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's going on? Hi, man. <laughs> Looking for food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Just uh, some closer ones, yeah. Of course, you you have all the orcas. You also, when you out there, you want the door, the the, the humpbacks when they go down, uh, and uh, you have to have the tail fin coming up. And and this is the pictures, the picture everybody wants uh, to have the, the tail fin. What is this? This is um, three thousand two hundred ISO. Uh, they are moving a little bit slower, so I can tune down the uh, the up, the shutter time a little bit. I don't need the same shutter time as uh, I got with uh, orcas when I do. If I'm forced to to go down on on the shutter time, so here is like 500 per second. And uh, the scientists, they are uh, they know everyone the individual uh, whale by by scratches and then uh, marks here on the how they look on the fin and so on. Um, okay, the rule is you should not be close to the whales, but the whales don't know that rule. It's just like in Antarctica with penguins. If you sit down, they come up to you and they start picking on you. And the same here, I often had uh, whales, uh, both orcas and whales coming in big speed just toward, right towards your boat. This is another boat who was out, another operator, and that was out uh, with guests. And uh, they come straight for you. And um, and uh, even the big waves, they come and they go, wow. And suddenly you, you see, oh, they're going to ram us. And just uh, some meters away from us, they go underneath you. And you can see them coming out. Or they could come at the side of you. So um, actually, I, uh, I managed to... Um, to get uh, this is a uh, 70 millimeter as wide as I could get it, so it's just close. It's a humpback, a big humpback. It's many times longer than a boat, and I look down its nose, just at the side. It's amazing. And also, that's that's like the the wolf howling. It's it's a head rush. It's really a head rush. <laughs> yeah, <it must laughs> <be. laughs> yeah. And the adrenaline is, is 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 driving going on, and then you take the picture afterwards. You're thinking, what yeah. happened there? It was the big comeback, you know, actually that close. What could yeah. have happened yeah, yeah. to the boat? Actually, yeah. And people ask me, "Oh, did you get it?" I said, "I have no idea. I don't know what I've, I have no idea what I have on my memory cards because it's just oh. I've been in the situation. I have no idea what's going on in the." Yeah. It's been fantastic with the wolf howling and, and the humpback howling uh, or taking in air. So yeah. it's fantastic. Really cool. Yeah. And you can hear the needle. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. They make this sound as they come up and and, and you just, oh, this, they are around. Where, where, where do you find where, Can you see them? <laughs> and yeah, suddenly, yeah. oh, it's right here. Oh, watch out. <laughs> I understand that that the mind must be working and working and working because you have to be alert all the time. And when you get into the show, you must be totally finished uh, and worn out. That actually. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and, uh, and when we got back, Paul and me got back uh, to the house we had uh, borrowed on Shabai in the evening, or at three o'clock when it was dark. Uh, then we had to start working on uh, fixing images because it was a short uh, uh, window. We had to, to prepare everything, and, and so um, yeah. so we were really dead tired after this. Uh, and Paul had yeah. lots of big jobs. I think he was just uh, total mel melted after uh, after this, and he had to do all the big jobs. <laughs> yeah. I could uh, take rest for a few days. 
the first time so, that uh, the two of you didn't speak uh, endlessly so yeah probably. yeah and, uh, it's the first time we didn't drink too much beer in the evenings at least <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so so, um, so but uh, it's really a pleasure to work with him i'm totally honored okay um so that's um that's uh, that's like uh, the, the images I got from uh, from uh, from the whale project. I'm I'm really looking forward now to to get to work with that lens. I'm going to Spitsbergen in, in now in end of February on the full moon. The light is coming back in February and in in, in, uh, in early March. So on Spitsbergen. So I'm I'm looking forward to try it under more normal conditions. Yes. Uh, do you have a question, uh, Fleming? I do, but I want you to go to the next slide first. Oh, yeah. I know what it is. <laughs> yes. I think this picture is a good stopping point for taking a few questions. Yeah. And can I just say those are beautiful, amazing images, and the chat is just full of everyone loving your work and being amazed by these fantastic pictures. Uh, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored. So let's let's do a couple of questions from earlier on in the chat. Uh, the first one is a bit personal. Uh, Christian Eriksen wants to know what kind of protection filter you use. I don't know if you want to answer that. Good question. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, if, if the filter or the for the for the kit for the for the camera kit. Yeah, yeah. the one where the X2 was no, or the the camera is totally broken. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, the 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 of course it's weather sealed. Uh, on the ocean, I really I really learned how to read the waves and the movement of the boat. Uh, when you're exposed on the open boat and a small boat, the good thing with a small boat is that you can go low. If you have a more flat ocean, you can go low and get a really low angle. Uh, on conditions like we had now, I didn't dare to lean over the side and go down because that's the thing you can do with a with a with a smaller boat. Um, but Anyway, when you're going around in the fjords, it's moving, and suddenly you will see, oh, there's a big, it could be more swells, but it's a lot of movement, and sometimes you, and you have this spray over you. And uh, it, it doesn't, I've, I've got sprayed many, many times. I, it's not being destroyed by that. It's salt water, so you, it's like uh, uh, the guarantee is not uh, found of, of uh, of salt water damages, uh, so it's really dangerous. But uh, you have to clean when you come in uh, in the evening. Uh, the first thing I do is clean everything and wipe away salt on the outside and whenever they take a wet uh, cloth. But during the day, during the day, there's uh, one thing that is important. It's uh, you get water on this. Of course, you have. You have, uh, you call it the, the sun, what is it called? Sun, uh, what do you call it in English? To avoid sun. Uh, but That's I call the it lens uh, the lens hood, yeah. Yeah, lens, yeah. yeah. But uh, in Northern Norway, we mainly use it to avoid uh, uh, snow and rain and, and water. So it helps me a lot to, to keep water away from the lens. When I, when I go there with the, with the boat, I see oh wave coming and I turn away. So I, I hide the camera and also remember always tuck down your bag. You, you don't want to fill your bag. I have I have waterproof bags that I use. So it can take any, but if it's open and I fill it, then it's gone. It, everything is gone. But there's a word we say: wipe and shoot. Wipe and shoot. So when it's rain, when it's a lot of moist in the in the air, you just have to clean, clean, and shoot. I always have in my pants. My pants are always I have always tie pockets. So I have two clothes at least. You can buy those small clothes in the in in the in, in the in the camera store. But you know, working like this, they are too small. It's like one, two, and they, oh, everything is wet. You can't use it. So I buy, I go to the, the grocery store and the microfiber cloths. Yeah. That's really soft. I buy those. Yeah. They are a little bit bigger. So I have one in my tie pocket and one in my camera bag, at least. 
So I, when I see, I, I have to check all the time. With all those, this cleaning, it's important that you have the UV filter because you will wear out the, uh, the lens, the glass with all this because sometimes you have dust coming in and you may get a little scratch. So have a, have a UV filter so you can just turn off the, the dust. Uh, when, when it's too much scratches, you just uh, change this one. But wipe yeah. and shoot, wipe and shoot. Sometimes it's so much water in the air, so I do that all the time. And, and why you should actually use a filter when you use those cloth is because they are like uh, razor blades and yep. they uh, can actually scratch uh, the glass. So that's why you use uh, filters and then you can really wipe them off and you you actually do them a bit material so you will actually wear them out and then you can shift, uh, change the, the filter instead of a whole lens because that's uh, impossible actually. So it's a good, really good... Uh, use the the, the filters yeah. um, because they will destroy the glass uh, eventually so you can change that and new one on. Yeah. But at the same time the small clothes they, they should have bigger clothes and they're too expensive and and this is I, I use I, I use them once and then I come home I send them to wash and I use them in the kitchen and then I buy new yeah. ones on the camera bag. Yeah. Do you use any special brand or, or type of uh, filters? Uh, no. I have no. I, I, I'm really untechnical. Right now, oh, the bottom of a beer can or something like that. AW. I have, no, but I try not to to buy the the, the cheapest one because there, there's always something with. But uh, I don't see different. Actually, I don't. Uh, I try to have the expensive ones and try to I see, it. and and as always, they say that oh, it's gonna. Do this and that with uh, you have on the package. It's gonna do this with your picture. <laughs> I don't see that. I probably bash the picture images up in uh, in Lightroom anyway. So this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Do you then, have more questions? Yeah, there's a lot of people that are naturally asking. Uh, and since you've used both, how do you compare the seventy to three hundred and the one hundred to four hundred? Yeah. In yeah, what would you use, and uh, yeah, what's your opinions of the two? Um, the one hundred, four hundred. I love it. It's it's super crisp. Um, but I feel it really be, be, between my my shoulders when I've been working, standing there for a, especially on assignments like this, or if I'm a boat expedition on Spitsbergen, it's a lot of working, and then you get your yeah, you get the bull neck. Because you work, uh, I use, I, I, and I think I will still try use. Depending on uh, when you have long uh, valleys and long stretches, when you need to get closer, of course you have a hundred millimeter more on this one, and there are hundred, four hundred. Um, but I should really give it a try. Uh, for normal consumers, it's also a big difference on price. This this one, the seventy three hundred, this will be a hit. This will people will flock to get this one because, um, and I think we will feel the sales on the other two. Of course, the, what they compare it to is the fifty five two hundred, but the difference on I would rather have a seventy three hundred than a fifty five two hundred because the hundred millimeter extra that you get here is is important. So you think it's a really so, good um, compromise? It's a good uh, alternative to the 100-400, both in weight, uh, size, and pricing, if you have to, you know, not buy the, the Big Brother? Yeah, I haven't compared, of course, to do the technical, if it's a little bit crisper, sharper, this one, and I, I, I haven't done that. But it's actually, in the end, what you, what you would be able to see. Yeah. Um, but for me, running on the mountains, uh, on normal light conditions, I would definitely bring one. Weight yeah. is everything to me. I have to carry it up on the mountain. I, I have to yeah. down again. And sometimes I say, uh, when I lie there in my tent, ready to go up on the mountain, I say, I don't think I need that one now. I, I could probably leave that in the in the in the tent. 
no, you can't. No, no, you can't. <laughs> then I. It's a, yeah. And it's, a, it's like this, we, we started out with a small system and everything should be small and light and suddenly the, the lenses get bigger and it's really good to see that you, we still, you know, step a big a step backwards again and, and have an alternative that's light and has a long uh, range, uh, like 300 millimeters. So it's a good, it, it's a good solution. I really have been looking forward to this 7300 uh, because uh, weight and 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 the size and so on is fantastic so so you you, you have a choice and that's uh that's i think personally that's good of course. Uh, i don't know what you think out there maybe give some comments um how you think yeah also the numbers just the uh, 7300 it gives me a warm heart uh, i've been in the game for a while so it's quite easy even though it's different the numbers are different than uh, what you actually get uh, on enlargement but uh, or how close in you can zoom, but it's um, it was really easy for me to pick this up and uh, start to work on it. Yeah, and uh, like I couldn't have done the thing with the whale or the wolf um, when it came too close to me on the hundred uh, four hundred. That would be just too close. So, so the, the from hundred to seventy, that's that's a big difference uh, when you when you have the variety of, of zoom yeah is the right. uh, is the aperture the same on the 7300 and 100 to 400 i, I can't remember i can't remember either i have to check i'm as i say i'm super untechnical 4.5 to 5.6 isn't it and then... so it's almost a little bit less uh, on this, the yeah. 100 uh, yeah there was also a really good question about sort of how you got uh, started did you know did you know you always wanted to be a a wildlife photographer or did you do something completely different yeah i actually found when uh, my father moved uh, uh, we uh, we emptied his house and a loft and we found the old books that i had written as a 13 year old or something like that and it was his book with uh, my old classmates and uh, and i I had written in my own book, I also written, and it says, one of the questions is, uh, what do you want to become when you grow old? And at uh, 13 years old, I said, I want to become a wildlife photographer. I had no, I, at the age of 18, I didn't realize that. <laughs> um, but I always been drawing. I mean, you know, early days, I mean, we're painting and drawing, but then you, you, you turn uh, 13, 14, and you have to go chasing girls. You have no, no time to sit at home and doing all those sketches and so on. And I started to take photo take pictures. So I always brought a small camera in my, my pocket and it just. Try to be a photographer. I were probably too stupid to realize I couldn't be that because it's difficult to, to, to be able to do that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I see images all the time. And when I when I hear music, I see images, and when I see images, I hear music. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess I'm a little bit damaged, but. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes but, I think um, it'd be cool to have, you know, you could take pictures with the eyes because you just see compositions all the time. Yeah, but also oh. uh, sometimes it's good to put away the camera because uh, afterwards I've been like working, I have no idea what I've seen throughout the day. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. you need to just uh, put away the camera and just take an image and another one and another one and <laughs> store it on your hard drive. Yeah. So you can remember what you not only through your images but you actually have been. And I think that's a big yeah, <clears throat> thing we photographers need to to do to be able to put away the camera also. Yeah. So well, there, there was a good question about the focus speed as well of the seventy three hundred, with for example the orcas. Yeah. Yeah, um, it depends on if I'm using sometimes if, if they are just moving along, uh, they I use the single shot. Uh, what do we call it? We call it uh, continuous. Yes, mm. uh, continuous focus works really well uh, on this one. Um, if it's how fast it is, um, I don't think I had many unsharp pictures on the project. Mm. I just have to choose, um, yeah, which which 
one of the tech 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 should be the best one where it had the best position the movement and so on so uh, but how fast uh, i don't i read those tests but i i don't understand them uh, it's fast enough for me i had no trouble with uh, i would focus in this low contrast low light it was was what impressed me most with this uh, lens, actually. So, do do you have any f uh, feeling in inside of you the 100-400 versus the seventy three hundred? Are they equal speed, or is it a bit I, faster because it's smaller uh, elements inside? This is faster. Yeah, I think this, this is, is faster. faster. So it's I'm, faster than the one hundred four hundred. Yes. Yeah. I think I feel it's faster. Yeah. It it so, should be uh, faster because the the lens elements are are that much smaller, so the weight uh, is is way smaller, so yeah. we can push the the elements faster. And there's a linear motor, as in one hundred four hundred, so it should be uh, yeah. faster. Um, so so and that's uh, that's good to hear. That, that was mm -hmm. also the purpose on with this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, or should we? Watch your pictures. I don't think people come here to watch uh, watch us. Uh, just uh, talk a lot. <laughs> uh, hopefully, they come from both. But yeah, I could definitely watch yeah. more pictures. I know it's getting. Uh, we've been going for an hour, and hour and thirty minutes pretty soon. But I don't know what you say, but I think we should uh, watch a little bit from Svelbart. Just a little teaser. Yeah, well, yeah. If, if, if you hang on out there, let's see some Svalbard pictures. And of course, we should be finished in three minutes, but let's take another 10 minutes. We are 122 people, so I think they're quite excited about the pictures. It looks like that. So give us a 10 minutes more. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm on. I'm game. So okay, as I said, I'm 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 quite unpretentious about myself. Uh, I like to go out with good friends. I like to have a uh, fun, uh, good laugh. Uh, but uh, with my photography, I'm anything but unpretentious. Uh, I'm I'm doing I'm out doing everything like uh, like dog sled expeditions. Uh, done several of them with uh, my friends at uh, Solbad Wilmer Center. Dog sled expedition to the east coast over a week, then you're out. And uh, I don't have my own. Normally, uh, as a secondary second guide, I should have uh, my own sled, but I never have because I want to use my skis or my feet just to be able to move around to run around. Um, the same, you are out there, and especially you, you have to. You, you they won't, no one can help you except your friends that together with you. I never go alone. That's just dangerous. Uh, you have to be able to drive the snowmobile, and something happens, you have to be able to fix it. Um, and if I'm out with skis or snowshoes or whatever, uh, I have to carry everything myself. So uh, together with my tent and my heavy sleeping bag and everything and down jacket and whatever I need and stove, I have to carry uh, the equipment. And that's what I love with love with, uh, with Fujifilm. It's so compact and tight and I get crazy a lot. I never, with a Canon, I never used to uh, have like everything from eight millimeter to like 600 millimeter. I never had that earlier in, in my bag. And now I got actually two houses and, and less weight. Uh, but you really learn how to manhole and you're so exhausted and you come up to the top and then you have to start working. Uh, this is a typical image. You, go with dog sled and you have to go on a high mountain pass. Uh, this is uh, Jan Frekel, so I have taken this image. Um, uh, that is me uh, up there. I want to do, on this situation, I want to do anything else but uh, doing to, to pull the sled, uh, try to help the dogs get the sled up there. You got several hundred kilos that needs to go up 10 meters. And uh, and I want to go on the side and take pictures, but uh, this is the only image I got uh, from this situation because I have to stay there. I have to do my job as the expedition member, but that's okay. And you also have to deal with the weather, and the camera kit has to deal with also with the with the weather. Um, my camera never comes into the tent when I'm out uh, in winter time or when it's cold. My camera never come in the tent. Then it will 
just um, fill it. the lens will be filled with moist and when I bring it out again it will freeze up it will be cold and and you will lose that lens until you get on the heated floor uh, when you get back then you uh, could use that lens afterwards but I really like I get the coolest pictures I actually get on the roughest weather I also do an Africa project where uh, I work with uh, Masai Loita Taurus with my friends uh, uh, Lekina and, and Milton um, and I could do a whole night on this one because we do hiking in the field with the Maasai warriors. So this is awesome. Uh, so I'm not only doing the Arctic, I have the love for the Arctic, but also for uh, Africa and Kenya. Anyway, um, I'm lucky to live here in, in Northern Norway. It's so crazy mountains everywhere. And we got uh, tall mountains and we got We've got uh, ocean, but the mountains are not that tall, so it's easy to have both uh, uh, shoreline and, and impressive mountains like this on the same day. And to get up early in the morning and follow the light, so you start in the dark and you come on the top like this when, uh, when the sun uh, appears. Uh, today I also work as a teacher on an outdoor, uh, outdoors course on a folk high school, uh, special school brand of, of uh, Scandinavia. Uh, so it's really cool to be out with those uh, youngsters, 18, 20 years old, and learn them the skills of being outdoor. Uh, this is more normal situation, like when you are on the light conditions where you have more light. So I just want to show you one image. This is one of my favorites. Uh, it's I wish I could fly with the spy hopping of the orcas. But uh, if you have the chance, really go up and see, get the opportunity to go up and, and and witness this uh, phenomena. Uh, I'm really into this about light. When the light, uh, to follow the light, uh, it's, it's different from throughout the month. And it's the full moon, especially here where we got the dark season, then the, the, the week before and after the full moon is super important. This is uh, an unbelievable image. Uh, you have to have a clear sky, one night the clear sky, you have to have aurora uh, and you have to have the wolves uh, at the right position and also the wolves need to be standing there for like, this is I think uh, um, 10 part second. So, uh, but this is uh, actually the same exposure as the next image, this exposure is just the same. It's all just the full moon here and this is one half week earlier. So this is how important uh, the moon phase is to me with being out. <clears throat> and also the snow, the white snow gives us uh, reflections. So uh, f yeah, I can't pronounce out how important the, the moon phase is in my work. Okay, let's up, uh, head out uh, to Spitzberg again. Of course, Spitzberg, everybody's thinking about uh, polar bears. That's what they uh, they think is the most important thing up there. Uh, I've been there many times. I actually lived there for a year without seeing the polar bear, even though I were in the field every day. So I've been on the East uh, Coast expedition with Dogshed and I haven't seen the polar bear. But suddenly you see the polar bear, yeah. But um, of course, he's impressive. He's the biggest uh, mammal predator we got uh, on the land-based. Uh, actually, it's Ursus maritimus, so it's the sea bear. But he is impressive. And this is from a, an, a, a dog, uh, from a boat expedition. And we are on the Zodiac. And he's uh, on a shore looking at us, because he you know we are here. But we are far out, and it's a good thing with the 100, 400 here, and also with the uh, with the converter, the 1.4 uh, converter, so you get much closer. This is actually one of my uh, uh, best, uh, the polar bear picture I love the most, and it's a hidden gem. I were really, really driving bow, my my, my uh, Zodiac driver here, he's like, oh, come on, oh, stop, stop, yeah, yeah, because in between the tusks, we got, a polar bear mom and a cub is sleeping between the tusks. So this is also like a magic picture. And I love uh, things like this. I don't, uh, this is okay, but uh, I like 
more uh, images where I got something happening around. My absolutely biggest uh, photographer, uh, photographer, my I'm the biggest fan of his Fredrik Granat, the Swede one. He's, you must check out his his images. He is the crazy guy on on uh, on polar bears, and he and Melissa, you should really check them out. They've been out with polar bears. I don't care too much about polar bears. Uh, I just want to be up there. The the feeling of being small in a large environment uh, and you have to take care of yourself. There's several ways of exploring Svalbard, um, either by snowmobile, uh, dog sled, which is the hardest thing because you with the snowmobile you, you go out fast and you can outrun the weather. Here you have to deal with anything. You have to deal with weather coming up. You have to deal with with uh, polar bears if you come or whatever danger or situation comes, then you have to deal with it. If someone gets sick out there, of course we have satellite, cell phone and 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 so on, but it's still, it's still uh, uh, the most awesome experience I have being with the dog sled. Um, the easiest way is to see uh, Svalbard with, um, uh, with boats, with the cruise traffic. And of course, you have those big boats with 100, 200 guests. Don't go there. If you have the chance, go with a smaller boat. This is like uh, Polar Front with the company Latitude Blanche, the French, and they they are super experienced and have this boat with. You have only 12, 13 guests. Then you got time to be to if you want to be a photographer, be here with uh, with a small boat uh, expedition. Uh, I also used to be. To be together with the guide company that called the uh, Twin Tracks, they are awesome, uh, super experienced, and uh, really good with the uh, guests and safety and everything. Because it's all about safety. Those uh, those trips. Um, if you get really lucky, you have some good friends. Uh, I have several super good friends in Longyearbyen. They are my uh, my compadres, and we go out with smaller boats. And the smaller boats you can go in the summertime and, and you, it's easier to access the fjords and come in and you can go wherever, you know, where you feel it's safe or good or whatever, what you want to. And you can hike the mountains and lie, use the cabins uh, in the fjords and yeah. Or if you're really tough, you could use uh, this one. It's the uh, ice mobile. Uh, but it's not so fast going and uh, you have to have guts and for this. Anyway, I'm going to present to you just now in the end, I'm uh, gonna sap through a few pictures. It's more like a, uh, it's more like a, a teaser, because I hope we could have a real uh, speech on just on, on Spitzberg, because I have, my heart is really here. And uh, so I think I will, without comment, just let you enjoy the last few uh, minutes here with just, uh, seeing uh, some of my just a random images actually and uh, the light is what is special with the uh, Spitsberg and, and the terrain so i'll just uh, try to shut up now and <laughs> let you watch the images
Well, so uh, that's a teaser of the space program, I think. <laughs> it is fantastic, Tommy. And if you could have followed all the messages, uh, I think Fleming would uh, tune in to me too and said the comments is fabulous. And I actually popped a question whether we should have a Tommy uh, version two, and. Uh, it seems like that we have to invite you once again for a second round because this isn't even far enough. Uh, many times. And seeing, yeah, many times. So, <laughs> so special and so beautiful. Yeah. Yes, really I'm, I'm and, quite honored. Uh, yeah. uh, you have so I'm many, many, so you have many I'm, stories. So. Yeah, but, yeah. but that's, uh, I had a big challenge of putting this together because uh, I could do a whole evening on just being with the boat, the small boat. I could be a whole evening on this cruise. I could be a whole, and Northern Norway, and we haven't touched Northern Norway, so yeah. 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 But anyway, it's, yeah. it's uh, an honor to be here, and all those images, so I say that you see now why it's, uh, why it's the importance of the lightweight uh, kit and so on. I could no problem with the GFX and especially the new one to do, but uh, to, to go with your friends and, and so on. It's uh, all those pictures just come along. I can't stop to, to think too much. They're just happening. So it's more documentary. And I like I like the Fuji film system. Uh, so I'm really, really pleased to be a part of uh, the family. I have to tell you, I'm honored. Yeah. I think uh, we are honored. I think it's it's just the beginning, and some rights we need a Tommy part one, two, three, four, and five, and so on. And you have plenty of material, and definitely we can confirm that we will invite you again, and we will do a, a version two and maybe a version three because you have so much to tell, and uh, hopefully everyone out there got some answers on their questions. It seems like we almost went through all the the most important ones and there was many thank yous for for the answers really good answers tommy um and this has been amazing uh we have been looking forward to this and my expectations was high but you blew it out and through the roof i love it i like it so definitely we'll do a second round with you uh yeah. um amazing yeah and definitely my savings is going to a trip to norway Definitely just to grab just a tiny pinch of what you actually have been experiencing in Norway. That would be amazing to have with me. Um, uh, so I would yeah. say some of my uh, hard spent money to go there. And hopefully you, we can join up. So yeah, I told you guys, you're mostly welcome. Uh, it's going to be rough, but it's going to be awesome. It's going to be yeah. always uh, awesome. <laughs> I have to go in, in, in the work <laughs> workout <laughs> studio to do this, so, but I will be ready. And hopefully yeah. your leg will be good too and in and, and good shape. So let's see next year maybe and when everything is in open and we can uh, yeah. travel freely, hopefully. So cross our fingers. Yes, we hope it opens up. Yeah, I will yeah. give you a fantastic thank you uh, yes, and to all the participants too. And... Really yeah, thank you, Tommy. I mean, you maybe have some words too. I just wanted to add that I think this was actually a really emotional journey, and I think uh, for quite a lot of us, uh, 
living in lockdown or similar conditions and uh, at least all living under the pandemic for sure that this this trip through your incredible pictures was unbelievable and can't wait to have you back on the show thank you mm. amazing thank you yeah that's the good thing we know that sometime we will open up again everything will open up yeah. again and we just have to prepare we have to not stop dreaming exactly uh, yeah say to me oh you're so lucky to get to do all these things i'm not lucky i actually decided to do those things so and that's the thing you have all we have all this time to to plan and, and prepare for when it opens up yeah yeah uh, a exactly. nail in my living ready. room or uh, once again, uh, for a long time when it opens up again yeah so um, yeah but it's really fun being here and i hope uh, you yeah. guys have uh, enjoyed Uh, uh, we have event. and the audience definitely have to i want to say thank you to fleming because he's been controlling the control tower like spotless and um and it's been fantastic to just get a glimpse of your journey and be a, a tiny lego man and and sit on your shoulder and follow you and we would do a second round with you definitely maybe a third one too so If all of you out there just check out our Facebook uh, site on 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 Footy Film Denmark or the footyfilmx.com site, we will post some links and maybe we'll uh, probably send out an email where you get some ideas where you can find you, Tommy, and your work, and go to the XCOM site and 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 whatever we can figure out. Um, otherwise, next time we'll pre prepare everything, uh, links and so on. Uh, this has been brilliant, as uh, Stephen Kehoe uh, says. They've been actually attending from all over the world tonight. Quite amazing. So it's not only the Nordics from all over the world. Um, so you should say thank you to you from a lot of them. Um, it's really difficult to let you go, but we have to. We have to put the people into bed. They have a, a working day tomorrow, a lot of them probably, and you too. And this was, for me, Uh, a meltdown because there's a lot of impressions that I need to, uh, yeah, uh, travel through afterwards here. And I'm loving to dream about the the session and the pictures. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tommy. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, Tommy. Let's just add at the very end here that we will have another exciting photographer on probably in two weeks' time. So just make sure you follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. I just posted some links and also to follow, follow Tommy on Instagram as well to see more of his fantastic work. Definitely. So yes, I'm looking forward to the next show. It's going to be good. Yeah. So let's uh, say thank you for tonight. Thank you, Fleming. Thank you, Tommy. Have a great evening. Yes. Sleep well. Stay safe and see you soon again in two weeks. Keep a track on uh, our uh, Instagram and Facebook and check out what's coming up. So have a safe and good night. Take care. Bye-bye from here.